Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Him forever. When we watch news in these days, we can see that the whole world is somehow scared of this new virus, coronavirus, which is spreading very fast. We hear about even not cities, even like areas which are putting in quarantine to isolation. We hear this press conference of governments almost in each state in the world that are giving instruction what to do to stop spreading of this virus. And we hear the same things all over that, well, you should wash your hands. You should avoid situations or where you can get this virus, this infection. If you are sick, don't go among people. If you are sick, seriously, find help, visit a doctor. But they try to somehow to calm us down and say, well, uh, but it's not so bad because only one something, a little bit more than one person is mortality. So it seems like not a lot of, but if you hear that in America, in middle of May, they expect six million people be infected. So this one person is huge number. And we are scared. And if you go to the store, you cannot find anything. The sanitizers, it's, um, it's gone. You cannot buy these protect things like masks and other stuff. You cannot buy that. People are buying grocery in, this, in the case that they will be in some kind of isolation because of all illness, illness or maybe there will be not enough food in the stores. It might happen. It's scary. And we are scared a little bit, and we start to pay attention. The whole world is paying attention now to this virus because it's threatening our life. But today in Gospel, we, or through this our Gospel, we realize that God's view is a little bit different. God saw that man who was suffering on body and this paralytic state really was threatening his life because he depended totally on others' help. If he doesn't have this help, the person would die from hunger and thirst because he would be not able to feed himself. That despite of that, Christ doesn't pay attention to this state of his body. He looks at him and sees his soul, and he sees serious threat. He sees that his sins causes that he might lie, uh, lose life eternal. And this is why he wants to help and to heal that man. So why he says, your sins are forgiven. Because this is what is in God's eyes more important. In God's eyes, our life or this earthly life is just a very short episode. 
because God created us for eternal life. And this eternal life is in front of us. We, because we live in time, we don't have this understanding of this eternal life. We know this word, but if we cannot even imagine what does it mean. So this is why we are concerned about today, present time, maybe next day, maybe next few weeks, maybe next few years, even in ne next half century. We can plan our life for our younger. But still it is nothing. It is short time. And what God tells us today, well, yes, there are many things which cause danger to your earthly life. But it is nothing if we compare it with state of your soul. Because you can lose earthly life, but you are entering to everlasting life. And we should take care, may we are not dead for this everlasting life. We have to realize something, uh, something what we don't think about. We are now, come, we have this concern, the whole world somehow is scared about this infection which is spreading really fast. But we are not aware of infection of unbelief. We are not aware of infection which is this resistance against God. We are not aware of this spreading of this infection of hate towards God through the world. We are not aware of this spreading of this infection of denying God's words in our life. And it is spreading faster than this coronavirus. And mortality is not one person. Those who are infected by sin, there is mortality 100%. If we are infected by sin, serious sin, or we are infected by 1,000 little one sins, we are losing this life with God. We are losing eternal life because we become dead for God. And this is very important to realize that there is more serious threat in this world than this coronavirus. Yes, it might kill us. And what? If we are with God, we will live. And we will live even better life than we have here. But if we let die this life with God, then what we are going to hell. And the advice is for this to be protected for this life with God, for the eternal life, to be protected against this infection of sin, are very similar. If they tell us today, wash your hands, don't let be your hands dirty because you can touch your face and to let this virus infect whole your body. The church and Holy Father say the same thing. Keep yourself clean. 
if you came to, if you touched something what is unclean, they mean if you failed in keeping commandments and you became through this not clean, tainted by sin, go and clean yourself. If you need to clean yourself through repentance thousand times per day, do it. Then they say, now they say, well, if you feel that you are sick, don't go among people because you can infect other people. The same thing is with us. When we fail and we are in a state of sin, we are causing spiritual danger to everybody around us. Everybody around us. It sounds like nothing. But look how whole society can be changed. If you have in society, in culture, majority of those who live well, that life which is going against God, so everybody sees this is normal because majority lives that. If majority says that, well, abortion is good, so it seems that, well, whole culture says this. If majority of people, they say they, to live together before marriage is okay, so it seems that it's normal thing. Culture was totally changed. It's not anymore Christian culture. We can, we can really be, look like strange people if we keep commandments in this culture. But this culture was created by people and there was connected, created by Christians who live in a state of sin and they brought this infection to the others. They created culture which denies God and his commandments. Because sin causes, not repented sin causes, that I just try to justify the way how I live how I act, so I proclaim my sinful acting as a normal and correct way of life. We say, in this time you live this way. And we are doing that. We are spreading this infectious sin among ourselves. So this is good to go to isolation until I don't repent and, uh, until I don't fix my life. And they say, if you are seriously and you feel that you are, you are sick, go and find help. Go to doctor. They, they would give you medicine. And this is what we heard in two weeks ago when Bishop Milan was reminding us this wonderful gift from God, sacrament of repentance, reconciliation, confessions through which our heart and soul is healed. We are facing a bigger problem in these times. Coronavirus is nothing. Yes, yes, we have to be wise. We have to protect ourselves. We have to follow all, all these good instructions because it is wisdom there that we should protect ourselves. But we should not forget that body is more important than our soul. And we should pray for wisdom from above, which will show us 
more dangerous infection which is spreading very fast. Infection on unbelief, denying God, and trampling His commandments. And we have to admit that we feel this infection. How many times we live our life and we put in settings to our life accord our wish as I want to live, not as God tells us how to live. So we have to be aware of this spiritual infection because remember this coronavirus kills something like one person will be infected. This virus of sin kills 100% of infected. And this is, this is scary and serious. And this great fast which we have now really should serve us to open our eyes for this spiritual reality and to search if this infection didn't reach our heart. And for this infection there is a cure which works one hundred percent and this is receiving of forgiveness from God and our repentance.